Hey folks, today we are going to talk about transport of substances across the cell membrane. So basically talking about osmosis and diffusion. All right, um, let me quickly, something not messed up here, let me just do this. All right, start from the beginning. All right, so let's talk about quick vocab. Uh, solute and solvent. All right, we're talking about how things get across the membrane. Um, things get across the membrane, um, the stuff we want to get across the membrane uh, varies, okay? It can be water, uh, it can be stuff like um, proteins or whatever. Um, but we have, we have some terminology we kind of got to start with, okay? Uh, first one is solute. The solute is the stuff that we want to dissolve. Uh, think about like Kool-Aid and water. The Kool-Aid is the stuff you want to dissolve. That would be the solute. Uh, the solvent then is the stuff that actually does the dissolving. That matters because when we talk about getting across the membrane, things go from a high concentration to a low concentration, generally speaking. So when you have a lot of stuff, the stuff you want to get that's been dissolved in water across the membrane, um, that's what we are looking at, okay? And then when we talk about concentration, the other thing we kind of look at is just like, is there a lot or is there a little bit? Is it super concentrated or is it dilute? Okay, so those are the kind of terms we'll be using throughout this uh, PowerPoint, this lesson, all right? The first type of transport is called passive transport. It's passive because no energy is needed, all right? So that's kind of the key point here. There's not a lot of energy needed to make this happen. Particles are going from that high concentration to the low concentration, where there's a lot of stuff, where there's a low amount of stuff. And they do this until uh, equilibrium is reached. And equilibrium is where you have the same uh, concentration on one side as you do on the other side, okay? Now, keeping in mind, particles are in constant motion. So some from each side are switching sides across our cell membrane. Um, it's just that more crossover from the high concentration side to the low concentration side, okay? Uh, so again, we're not talking about necessarily number of particles moving, we're talking about concentration, All right? So from a high to a low. Two types of passive transport we kind of have here are called diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion is just any particle moving across the cell membrane. In osmosis, we are specifically talking about water, and we'll get into that in just a second. Cool animation here. You can kind of see the particles on the left. Uh, there was a high concentration particle on the right. There was a low concentration. Particles generally, again, the, the general flow is from left to right, but some also move from the right to the left until we reach that equilibrium. So let me just show you that again. So again, left, low, or excuse me, left had the high concentration, right had the low concentration, um, and the particles just move from high to low, in this case from left to right, until equilibrium is reached. Now, they stopped, the animation stopped, um, but particles, these particles would still be moving across the cell membrane. The membrane has selective permeability, which means only some things can actually pass through. Now, we also talk about how our membrane was a phospholipid bilayer. So how do things get through? They literally just push themselves through that cell membrane. Or, depending on what they are, they can actually use um, those proteins within the cell membrane. So some things can just actually go through the membrane. Um, some things have to use special channels, okay? Uh, if they're using special channels, we call that facilitated diffusion, right? And those proteins that were in the cell membrane are now helping move particles across the cell membrane. So you can see here, this first one, that was like a bridge, right? So the particles go from one side uh, to the next. Again, it's kind of like a bridge. Uh, in this other one down the, the second picture here is called a carrier protein, uh, which actually changes shape. So it's almost like more like a gate, right? Like, think of them like a gatekeeper. The only specific particles can move through that, okay? Uh, but those are different types of facilitated diffusion where any particle is kind of going across the cell membrane using a protein. Osmosis um, is just diffusion of water across the cell membrane. Water is so important in life, we actually have a specific term, osmosis, that we use when we're talking about how it gets across the cell membrane. So you can see in this picture, right, uh, the black dots represent water molecules, the white dots represent sugar mo molecules. Uh, so therefore, on the right side, we have a higher concentration of water molecules compared to the left side of this picture. Um, it's a less concentrated amount because that sugar, right, is actually lowering the concentration of water on that side. And we'll do a lab later this week that kind of shows that as well. So the water should then move from the right side to the left side until we get this 
equilibrium. So there you go, there you have it. Um, in this case too, the sugar cannot move. So we don't see any sugar going from the left to the right. It cannot cross through that membrane. So again, the trend is that more water will move to the left from the right. Um, some will still move from the left to the right, just not as much until we reach that equilibrium. Talk about solution concentrations and how, in which way does water move, okay? Uh, first one I talk about is isotonic. Iso kind of means the same, all right? So same concentration of water inside and outside the cell. Okay, in this case, our blood cells, that's that top picture, are in a normal environment, okay? Water is going to move in and out at the same time because the concentration is equal there, okay? Technically in plant cells, that's the bottom picture there. Um, that is not its normal environment. And I'll show you that here in a second. But isotonic means that there's the same concentration inside and out. So therefore water will move in at the same and out at the same rate. The next one is called hypotonic. Okay, um, so in a hypotonic solution, the concentration of solute is greater inside the cell, right? That means there's a higher concentration of water outside the cell. Because of that, right, high to low, right, water's gonna move inside the cell. In an animal cell, you can see that top picture, uh, the cell could potentially burst and it wouldn't work anymore. That cell membrane would fall apart. In a plant cell, a bottom picture, this is like its normal environment. That cell wall keeps it from rupturing, keeps it from breaking open. And it's called turgor pressure, okay? And that actually is going to support the cell and support the plant and kind of make it stand upright. And so it's kind of cool in that aspect where um, when, a, when a plant wilts, it loses the water, right, but still has some shape because of the cell wall. And so when it's full of water, it actually makes it stand upright. The last one we have is called hypertonic. In a hypertonic solution, what happens is there's a higher concentration of water inside the cell than outside the cell. And so the water will actually leave the cell. You can see here the shells shrivel up. Um, in an animal cell, they're not going to function as well. In a plant cell, the cell membrane will pull away. But again, we still have that cell wall providing shape. And so the cell itself does not shrink, uh, but the interior of the cell will shrink. Okay. Here are those pictures again. You can kind of see again, the middle is the isotonic, right? Kind of a normal environment for animals. Um, to the left would be hyper, to the right is hypo. So we kind of know what is happening in those pictures and what is going to happen if you place a cell in a hypotonic solution, it's going to swell up, right? There's a higher concentration of water outside than inside. And then hypertonic is the opposite. So kind of know those words. The last kind of transport we have then is active. And active transport, we need energy because we're now moving from a low to a high concentration, okay? Um, kind of like salmon swimming up a stream, right? They need more energy. And so some of our uh, cells will purposely do this to kind of create a concentration gradient so that when certain channels open, uh, there's a giant flow. And I'll show you that in a second. So again, the key here is that they need energy, right? See that getting bigger there. Um, they also are going to have to use proteins in the membrane. This doesn't, doesn't just happen. Um, we are forcing our cells to kind of do this. The one I talk about here, I'm actually going to skip that and I'll show you this picture, is the sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump really is with our uh, nervous system. So what happens, we're, we're pumping sodiums, potassiums to one side of the cell on purpose to create this really high concentration gradient. And we do that because when those channels then open up and you get your body signal something and your cells open up, uh, what's going to happen is there's this huge flood, right? Because we have a high concentration, we want to even it out of sodiums and potassiums across the cell membrane, uh, which is going to be able to send information rapidly. So that's kind of why that happens, all right? The other kind of active transport we have is called coupled transport. And that's just like using like the potassium sodium pump um, on purpose to kind of then, like when they open up, it'll open up a different protein, which can then allow something else to go through. So you actually will spend less energy overall uh, than if we were to kind of pump that stuff on its own, okay? Uh, last two things, uh, if they're too big, right, you can't get to the cell membrane. Right, what do we have? We have endocytosis and exocytosis. So endo is going to bring stuff in the cell. And in this picture, you can kind of see that the cell membrane is just kind of going to pinch around the substances, right? You have a giant protein coming in, hormones or whatever it might be. Um, you're going to create a vesicle around it and it pinches off. 
and that's going to end up going to the Golgi and then to the ER and so on. In exocytosis, it does the opposite. Uh, maybe this cell made a specific protein, it's got to get rid of it. Uh, maybe there's just some waste it's got to get rid of. And so we see that there's vesicle formed, probably from the Golgi apparatus, and it goes to the cell membrane, and merges with it, dissolve phospholipid bilayer, and then releases that stuff out. Okay. Um, and that wraps up our lesson.